Thanksgiving. Written by Narada Talus. Read by Tycho Dragon. Fandom Voltron Legendary Defender. Hashtag VPRP. Relationship Keith Shiro. They eventually managed to get the turkey off Lance's arm by engaging in a kind of game of tug of war. Shiro anchors Lance with his arms around his waist, and Allura, Keith, and Pidge pull on the turkey until it slips off with a disturbing sucking sound. Everyone laughs, except for Lance, who pretends to grumble about it for a bit, but ends up joining in the laughter eventually as well. The Holtz's kitchen is warm and filled with voices and delicious smells. Keith has gotten used to being surrounded by lots of people, but there's something different about today. These are people he's grown closer to in the span of the past few years than anyone else. People he trusts, people who trust him, people he loves, and who, in spite of all the odds, and to Keith's unending surprise, love him too. He feels a little overwhelmed suddenly, looking into their glowing faces, an emotion too big to fit entirely inside his chest, threatening to spill over. Needing a break, he steps aside and hops under the counter near the door, with his data pad. Keith at 002 underscore KTH. Guess I'm not alone anymore. He scrolls through his feed aimlessly for a while, until the sound of laughter makes him look back up. It's Shiro, and the sight of him hits Keith like a laser bolt straight to the chest. It fills him with a kind of warmth and a sweetness he never thought possible coming from himself. Shiro's wearing a simple gray t-shirt and jeans, but the way he carries himself, the way he laughs with the other paladins, so relaxed and so young and so beautiful, fills Keith with a sense of disbelief and enchantment. That Shiro is his. That all of this is somehow his. Shiro senses something off with Keith, because of course he does. He's Shiro, he always knows. He comes over, wiping his hands on a cloth with a half-smile still lingering on his lips. "'Hey, sunshine,' he says, inserting himself into the bracket of Keith's thighs and resting his prosthetic lightly on his knee. "'Hey, yourself,' Keith replies, and slips his data pad back into his pocket. Shiro bends to press his forehead against Keith's lightly, closing his eyes and just resting there. They slot together, and all the places being alone so long had left their edges jagged. This is great, isn't it? Hmm, says Keith. You doing okay? Keith swallows heavily, staring into the pocked white scar slashing over Shira's nose. I just... He trails off, because how can he explain to Shiro that his entire universe has suddenly become the size of Colleen Holt's kitchen? that everything he cares for can suddenly fill a whole room, that it takes up so much more space in his heart than he thought he'd had. He came from nothing. He was nothing. Nothing but desert and stars. And now... Now he's someone's entire son. It's a heavy burden, but one he finds himself willing to fight for. To kill for. Shiro seems to understand anyway because he kisses Keith, and what Keith needs more than anything right now is to be kissed. It's gentle, because everything about Shiro always is. Keith runs the flats of his palms over his shoulder blades, down his spine, and presses them into the back pockets of his jeans. He needs to hold on to something, or else he'll float away on this feeling, needs to touch every part of Shiro all at once, to reassure himself that he's real, that he's here, that he wants to be here. Keith wants to melt right into his chest and make a home there. He wants... He just wants. Shiro mouths against him, nipping lightly at his bottom lip. He tastes like Nunville and mac and cheese. He tastes like home. Keith pulls away and just clings to him for a while. Shiro lets him. He strokes his back softly with the endless patience and endless kindness that made Keith fall in love with him in the first place. They let the sounds of the others bustling around in the background wash over them, content to just rest here in their own private little world. The others understand that they need this, and let them be. 
From somewhere in the vicinity of Shira's collarbone, Keith mumbles, I can't believe I get to wake up next to you tomorrow. He can feel the curve of Shira's mouth as he smiles into his hair. I want to know what's even better than that. Nothing. Nothing can be better than that. I don't know about that. What if I told you you get to wake up next to me every morning? Okay, that is better. Shiro tugs him away lightly to kiss him again, and when Keith manages to open his eyes again, is to find Shiro smiling. I love you. Keith smiles back, flushing, pleased. He's still never sure how to react in the face of Shiro's plain and open devotion, so he does the first thing he can think of, reaches behind him to squeeze his bum lightly with one hand. Various groans and other expressions of disgust from behind Shiro tell him they'd had an audience, but Keith doesn't mind. Shiro blushing is the best thing he's ever seen. He likes it too much to be embarrassed. As Shiro leaves with one last peck on the cheek to go help Lance with the garlic knots, Keith's data pad vibrates in his pocket. He flips it open to a new reply from Allura. Allura at Allura underscore zero six, replying to at zero zero two underscore KTH. No, you're never alone. P.S. Can you mash the potatoes, please? The end. That was Thanksgiving. Written by Narada Talis. Read by Tycho Dragon. If you would like to leave comments or kudos on this work, please go to archiveofourown.org forward slash works forward slash 167 49985. Thank you for listening. <laughs>